Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I am Reverend Cindy Carr, Senior Minister at First Congregational Church, Watertown, United Church of Christ. We are a congregation that welcomes people of diverse backgrounds, orientations, and faith experiences. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at First Church. This time for online worship is being brought to you by the deacons of the church as a way to stay connected in faith and to maintain a spiritual focus as we navigate this pandemic. We will be worshiping online through August, as is recommended for all our United Church of Christ congregations in Southern New England. Our COVID response team has been meeting regularly, establishing guidelines for cleaning and social distancing, and preparing for our return to in-person worship. Provided it is safe to do so, we are hoping to return to the sanctuary for Rally Day in mid-September. Today's worship service centers on the use of parables as a teaching tool used by Jesus and by us today in order to better understand the kingdom of God. We'll hear at least one familiar parable that Jesus taught and explore several more from our own modern context. We hope this online experience of worship inspires you to a deeper faith in God and in Jesus Christ, especially in these trying times. So let us begin our worship with prayer. God, we open our hearts, our minds, our spirits to your presence with us today. Though we are apart from each other, we are made one in you, our creator. Bless the words and the music we hear today, that they may enliven us to receive your spirit, empower us to follow your will, and enrich those with whom we share your love and mercy. Strengthen us and keep us humble for the sake of your kingdom. Amen. As a worshiping community, one of the most important things we do together is to pray. 
So as we enter this time for our pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer, I would ask that you keep in your prayers those who might be sick with COVID-19 and all their caregivers, whether that's in the hospital, in rehab, or at home. While this pandemic is under better control in Connecticut, we are all aware that it is raging in other parts of the country. So we keep everyone affected by it in our prayers. I would also ask that you continue to pray for those who struggle with wearing masks. At the heart of the issue is the fact that wearing a mask is one of the best things we can do in conjunction with social distancing to help contain the virus. My prayer is that we can resist the urge to politicize mask wearing and see it as a way to love our neighbors. I also ask that we keep in our prayers and in our hearts all of the teachers, students, parents, and administrators who right now are facing difficult decisions about returning to school in just a few short weeks. While I appreciate the fact that my kids are older, I have many colleagues and friends that are wrestling with the need for their kids to be in school and stay safe from possible infection. This is not an easy time, and our support and our prayers are very much appreciated. So let us be together now in the spirit of prayer. God of love and caring, we find that we are more aware than ever of our dependence upon you, especially in these trying times. We feel small, we feel powerless against a small virus. We feel confused and frustrated as we navigate social distancing, canceled events, and the decisions about schooling our kids. Some of us have been sick with the coronavirus. Many more of us have cared for or know people who have had it. And all of us are concerned that it still rages on. Be with us, O God. Help us to find ways to work together rather than against each other. As we struggle with masks in the heat, as we're separated from family and friends, and as we very much grieve our normal life which includes being able to worship in person here in this very sanctuary. Remind us that kindness matters as we deal with others who might be impatient, that treating others as we would like to be treated is a key tenet in our faith, and that by working together, we are stronger than each would be alone. Help us to look to Jesus, not only for inspiration, but for the very wisdom that runs at the heart of the lessons he brings us. Help us to have faith in the vision of the kingdom that you have cast for us through Jesus. Help us to discern the will of your spirit and not confuse it with our own. While our needs are many, O oh God, keep us aware of the ways that we can indeed reach out and provide for others who have even greater needs. Keep us close to you. We pray for these and all things in the name of our crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who teaches us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
God calls us to live generous lives, to share the resources that we have, whether that might be the time that we give, the talents that we share, or our financial support of the church's ministries. When we share the journey of faith with each other, we experience the kind of abundant life that Jesus teaches us about, and generosity is an important part of that journey. We have many ways to practice generosity in these days. As always, I urge you to continue checking on your elderly neighbors and friends. If you can, please pick up a few items when you're at the store and donate them to Watertown Social Services. The food pantry is very low on food items. And especially at this time, I encourage you to reach out to parents, teachers, administrators, and kids 
We're all figuring out what to do about school and let them know that you care. Sometimes, rather than giving advice, just being present is a form of generosity that can make someone else's day so much easier. And as always, we encourage you to remember your regular giving to the church because it supports all the ministries that we do together. You can donate online or you can sign up for e-giving on our website or you can mail in your regular pledges and offerings to the church office. We give generously for the sake of Christ. For all that we offer into the world in time, talent, and treasure, I offer this prayer of dedication today. Generous God, you set before us many images of the kingdom of heaven, which includes the notion that sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. Receive the gifts that we offer you through the use of our time, through our talents, and through the financial support we can give so that your kingdom comes for the sake of all your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Today's scripture lesson comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 52. These are some of the parables that Jesus used to teach people about what the kingdom of God is like. A parable is a story that's taught alongside another lesson. It comes from the Greek word for parabola, if you remember what that looks like in math. So a parable helps us to see things from a different perspective, the same thing in a new way. So when you hear these stories, the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the leaven, and so on, remember that Jesus is taking an ordinary object that people would know in their everyday lives and teaching them uh, uh, something about the mystery of the kingdom of God and revealing that mystical truth. So hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then his, in his joy, went and sold all that he had and bought the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought that one. Another parable Jesus said to them. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. 
This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where they will be weeping and gnashing their teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. May God's blessing be added to our hearing and understanding of these holy words. When my kids were younger, we spent a lot of time reading. I still have an extensive children's library that I treasure, partly because we created such wonderful memories with all those stories, but also I just love good stories. We read adventure stories about Harry Bristlebeard, a Viking explorer. We read imaginary tales like The Cat in the Hat, The Wind in the Willows. We read historical tales like how the Statue of Liberty came to America and the truth about Sacagawea. We read science stories about Ducky, a rubber duck who traveled the ocean currents. We read moral tales like Stella Luna and Molly Lou Mellon, which I've shared here in church, and other stories that teach us to be kind and welcoming to others. And we also read Bible stories stories that teach us about Jesus and what it means to be a Christian. These days we talk so much about what has changed in our world, but the fact that people, young and old, love telling and hearing stories remains unchanged. Jesus knew this and he used it. He told stories to teach people about God, about heaven, about how we are to treat one another. And he often did so through the use of one particular kind of story, the parable. The word parable comes from the Greek word parabola, meaning throwing or alongside. It refers to a kind of story that is told alongside a lesson to help illustrate its meaning. A parable has several parts to it. The first is a familiar image. The second is an object or an idea, that is the thing you are trying to teach about. And the third is a comparison between the two. So many of Jesus' parables centered on teachings about the kingdom of God or about the kingdom of heaven, same thing. What is it? How do I access it? What does it take to enter it? Here's just one example of a parable. It's going to be told in a slightly different way than you know, but the parable should be familiar. Take a look. A woman was making bread. She added a small amount of yeast to her flour as leavening as she made the dough. She kneaded it and then set it aside for a while. But secretly working inside the dough, the yeast grew and grew and leavened the dough until it doubled in size. She formed the dough into two loaves, let them rest quietly, and the dough continued to rise. When she baked the bread, it made two large loaves of delicious honey wheat bread, enough to feed her family for days. The kingdom of God is like that. It grows from small beginnings, but expands to feed and nourish the whole world. And it is sweet and delicious. This parable helps us to see and to grasp a larger, more difficult concept. The kingdom of God, or kingdom of heaven, is a mystery that's hard to understand. It's not something you can see or touch directly. It's not a physical destination either. It's more of a spiritual space, a way of relating to the world, a way of being in the world that is both here and not fully here yet. In order to open up this mystery for his listeners, Jesus used images his people knew Things like tiny mustard seeds, or a single coin, or leavening, or the harvest. Today, we might have to do a little research to fully understand some of the images that Jesus used. For example, most of us have never seen the mustard shrub, the one that Jesus mentions. Most of us aren't farmers who have to deal with wheat and weeds together, so we have to do a little background work to see completely what he was getting at. But there are many images we know in our lives today that can help illustrate what the kingdom of God is like. Here's just one. 
A woman planted some tiny tomato seeds outside her back door. She hoped for a few tomatoes to liven up her salad and add to her grilled cheese. She watered them every day and kept them in the sunshine and they grew into large plants. But when the tomatoes ripened, she had so many tomatoes that they filled her counter, her windowsill, and a basket on her table. She then had to give them away to neighbors, co-workers, family, and friends for the abundance that she received. The kingdom of heaven is like the tomatoes. With just a little bit of care, the harvest overflows and we must share the abundance with others. A little faith goes a long way to feed yourself and so many others. There are so many wonderful modern images available to us today, which also help us grasp what the kingdom of God is like, or what God is like, or what Jesus is teaching us. Here's a parable from a woman named Addie Zierman, adapted for our use today. She writes, We accidentally on purpose got a hamster last week. His name is Hurley. Hurley is a cute little winter white from PetSmart who looks so docile and sweet in his cage. But then we got the wheel. Do they make hamster wheels that don't squeak? If they exist, I've never met one. It starts as soon as we put the boys to bed at 7.30. Squeak, 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 the wheel goes as Hurley goes round and round. At 10 o'clock when Andrew and I turn off the living room lights and come upstairs to bed, it's still going. Squeak, squeak, squeak. That little thing has to be running miles, Andrew says, as we lie side by side in bed, just listening. At two in the morning, the hamster is still running, the squeak, 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 echoing throughout the middle of the night. I can hear it perfectly from the kitchen where I lean my head on the cold patio door waiting for the dog to come back in. At 5 a.m. when my alarm goes off and I lie in bed, it's that squeak, squeak, squeak that pulls me out of bed. Because once you start hearing it, it's all you can hear. It's relentless and impossible to ignore. The hamster wheel squeaks, 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 and it occurs to me that it is like the kingdom of God. It has been at work all this time. When I'm asleep, when I am distracted, when I am unaware, it's still turning, turning, turning. God at work, always, in the world he created. The kingdom of God is growing and moving and changing everything, turning the world around. We wake into a kingdom that is already happening. The wheel squeaks its relentless song and the sun rises a little bit at a time, and we are invited to step into the healing, nonstop current of kingdom living once again. I love that parable. The kingdom of God is like a hamster wheel. The kingdom is persistent. The kingdom is present. The kingdom is absolutely accessible if we quiet ourselves enough to hear it, yet loud enough that we cannot ignore it. There are images all around us in our everyday lives that speak to us about what the kingdom of heaven is and who God is and who we are in relation to both. Here's another parable I think many of us can relate to. This one from Idolette Vicker. She writes, we need dreamers and we need drivers. These days I do a bit more driving than dreaming. I get to sit behind the wheel of our sexy silver minivan for several hours a day, several days a week, driving kids and friends and students to where they want and need to go. I pick up our exchange student from her hip hop class. I drive Gabby to her basketball practice. Taylor gets a ride to soccer practice and Shay and I drive to hockey on Sundays where I get to lace up skates and sit on a cold bench for an hour. We have three kids, one international student, and a very full life. I wouldn't have it any other way. My kids are old enough so they can participate in sports, but not quite old enough to get there on their own, so I get to drive them where they need to be. We drive a lot. I may not be doing glamorous work, but my participation in their stories is glorious in the kingdom of God. This kind of invisible service, Jesus sees it. These wheels turn for reconciliation and restoration. These tires burn for healthy hearts and strong souls. This body will sit and stay and carry the ones who need to walk into the future. My life cannot be about my own life alone. Driving is investing straight into the future. 
Driving is saying, you're welcome to the generations to come. Driving is laying down our own lives on behalf of others. It's not martyrdom. It's not the only thing. Yet seen through the right eyes, driving others to their future is a beautiful participation in the kingdom of God. There was a season in life when everything revolved around me. I was all about my dreams, my hopes, my vision of the future. It was all about what I wanted for dinner, where I wanted to go, what I wanted to choose. I still carry my preferences and hopes and dreams in this body and heart. But I can see now how the kingdom of God is like pulling up the minivan and throwing open the doors and filling up the seats so that we may travel together to something greater than our own one life. We get to multiply. We get to carry the ones who come along into the future that they hope for. We get to love others the way we would like to be loved. That dream in your heart, let me take you. That future you hope for, I'll go with you. We need dreamers and drivers. Dreamers can imagine beautiful new futures and lead the way. Drivers are the ones who say, I see that too. Let's go, I'll drive. This is such a powerful parable, especially for those of us who drove a million miles in that tired old minivan, or those who now drive that SUV for hours on end for the sake of others. Now, Jesus never drove a minivan or an SUV, but he's with us when we do. Expanding the kingdom, offering safe portage, investing in the future. The kingdom of God is like driving a minivan, assisting others to answer their calls. In this life, we may only get glimpses of the kingdom, but Jesus teaches us that it is real and it is at hand. And there are signs and images and parables all around us to help us with these glimpses. What parable are you living today? May God open our eyes to see them, open our ears to hear them, and open our hearts to receive them. Amen.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we conclude this time of worship, receive this blessing. May the power and blessing of Almighty God go with each of us this week as we minister in a weary world. Remembering to make good and holy choices that will channel love, compassion, and the presence of God to those around us. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us and those we love. In Christ's name.